thank you for coming. My name is Brandon Edley. I'm the director of product and design here at Limo Anywhere. I'll be walking you through uh, this Driver Anywhere webinar. Uh, with me, we also have our marketing team, uh, Vanessa and Karen. Um, we have uh, Jared uh, Russell. He's our product analyst here. He's going to be doing the driving um, and, and, and controlling the screen. So if anything messes up, please email him. It's right there. And just let him know uh, how you feel. Uh, Brett Densmore and Sean Miller are, are both with us as well, and they're going to um, uh, uh, help us um, with any sort of issues that, that we may have here. So let's go over uh, what we will be talking about today. Um, one, we want to just cover for those who are not using Driver Anywhere, um, you know, what is it? And why should you use it? We we'll also want to talk about the difference between our older version, which is still out there, it's DA3, and this newer version, DA4. We're going to take you sort of through the workflow of DA4 to make sure you sort of understand exactly uh, you know, where everything is and why we made the changes that we did. Um, there are some state mappings that are completely new, and we'll walk through that. We'll go into the Limo Anywhere system and kind of show you how to set that up. And we also have a very um, a pretty large update in the user interface uh, just to make it a more readable and uh, just we cleaned it up a little bit more um, for the future uh, and we're actually working on that right now um, so we're gonna we're gonna go through that and have sort of a show and tell and uh, we'll also talk about what the future of DA3 is and what exactly we're gonna do with it and then finally um, we'll talk about you know the end of, of DA3 because eventually we will have to stop supporting it and uh, additional gratuity, which we've heard some, uh, you know, we've, we've had some sort of input on how what we should do with additional gratuity and some users uh, use it. Let's get started. So what is Driver Anywhere and why should you use it? So Driver Anywhere is an app that your drivers can use to receive their information or receive uh, their trips with all important information. They can update statuses on the trip. Um, they can do things like log times, update rate data you know if you allow that take payments and you will also be able to track your drivers through gps on the gps tab all of this can be done and captured in real time we highly recommend you use driver anywhere because it can save you time and make you more efficient in running your business so i want to do a focus on da4 so let's talk about some of the differences uh, between da3 and da4 uh, one of the major things that DA4 offers is uh, some additional security for your passengers. We mask sensitive data after the trip is complete. So for security purposes, um, we hide pertinent passenger information from the driver uh, once it's closed by the driver or the operator. Um, this means the chauffeur will not be able to see the passenger's phone number, a full address, and full name inside of the application once they are complete. So even if they go and see their trip history, um, that data is hidden from them. We've also enhanced the greeting signs. Uh, greeting signs now have logos. So it will show your customer logo if you have it uploaded on the account. And if there is not a logo on the account, uh, the sign will show your company logo if available. We also display company name in there as well. So a major change and a big update that we did is uh, the trips in progress will always show. So in DA3, after time passes midnight, a trip will quote unquote disappear from the app and you will have to change the date range to have it show again. This is no longer an issue with DA4. If a trip is in progress, it will always show until they close out the trip. I think that is a, a, a large a gain in user experience. We also have more detailed driver profile with photo. So we've added more info about the car the driver is driving, including license plate number. Also, it will show the driver portrait if it is available. We also gave them the ability to specify a uh, mapping application provider. So sometimes drivers will have a preference to not use their default maps program installed on their phone. If the default maps program it's Apple Maps, but they want to use Google Maps for Driver Anywhere, the driver can set this option inside of the application. There's also the ability for the driver to view rate detail breakdown, if allowed, on the payment screen. So drivers who take payments are frequently questioned about the breakdown of charges for the trip. 
We have included the ability for the driver to view full breakdowns for these cases. It is accessible from the payment screen for now. And there's a general sort of improved workflow and streamlined finalizing process. Um, the flow of DA4 is more natural, in my opinion, as you work through each trip and close out these trips and take payments. The driver is not automatically taken to the closeout screen when the trip is set to done. The driver has to choose to close out the trip. So, Jared, can you switch over to the uh, Android screen so we can go through the workflow? So here, the um, workflow from the dashboard, which will show you all of your, you know, your next uh, pending, upcoming, and in progress trips, and it'll also show you, you know, how many trips you have on the pending tab. For instance, there's three. That's when you get that notification. But on the pending tab, you can, of course, view the details, but you can also um, accept or reject, right? So if you click accept or reject, it will move it to the upcoming tab. And if you click on the job card or press on the job card, it will take you to the job detail screen where the chauffeur can view all of the trip information. Um, they can also do some flight tracking and you know, sometimes the chauffeurs like to uh, see what the route looks like um, before they've actually started the trip or, or have accepted the trip. And they can do that here. So as you see, it has your stops right to Google Maps, the pick up and drop off and they can just navigate from here. So Jerry, can you go ahead and accept this trip? And it should move it over to the upcoming tab. Now notice when they hit um, accept, when Jerry hit accept, there's a, a small countdown that gives the chauffeur the opportunity to cancel their selection. So we'll, there you go. So um, you, you can, and, and also reject. Um, if the chauffeur rejects it, um, and your dispatch is set up to show rejected trips, um, you'll get notified um, by a flag on your dispatch. So now that we have accepted it, it is on upcoming. And upcoming means that, um, you know, it's uh, all your trips before you start them will, will come here. And so if you notice, the job cards are pretty similar, but now you have two other things. You have change status and you have start trip. So I will say, uh, I'll start with the start trip. Um, start trip will start the driver workflow. Um, that means it will set the status of this trip to whatever you have mapped to on the way. And it will move it to in progress once they start trip. Now, change status is a little different. And if um, you as an operator have any special statuses that you would like your chauffeurs to hit um, before, they uh, actually go to on the way, then um, you would press that status here. So um, there might be a status like driver confirmed or clocked in or I'm awake or whatever it is that you have set up. Um, they, your, your chauffeur will, will be able to uh, press that by going to the change status section. There's also the update screen. Enjoy. Can you uh, go there? And so if there needs to be any time set for garage out, ETA, any of these, uh, any wait time, mileage in, mileage out, add additional cost, collect payment before uh, the trip is started for any specific reason, um, then you can do that uh, from this screen. Also leaving attachments as well. I don't want to uh, forget about that. Go ahead and go back. Now, um, you go ahead and start this trip, Jared. So now that trip has been started and it is on the way. Um, and notice we are on the in progress tab now. So um, the most important things on the in progress job cards are uh, the flight tracking. So you notice we have these icons. We have the flight tracking icon. Um, if you press that, it'll take you to um, external flight tracking information. If you hit the navigate icon, go ahead and press that, Jared, you'll get an option to go from, um, you know, the pickup to the drop off, your current location. Like, like where, where do you want to go to? Do you want to map the complete trip or from your location to the stop? And so um, it's pretty smart and lets you uh, select exactly what kind of routing uh, you, are, you are looking for. 
and go back. Uh, from here, your chauffeurs will also have an option to call or text uh, the driver. Go ahead and press that so they can see how that looks. There you go, call a message. And um, of course, update the status, which is sort of the main part here. So if they press this, they will get um, the next available status for the trip. So now they are on the way. Um, they can either only go to arrived or circling or, uh, you know, canceled, things like that. And um, are you going to run through the, the he's going to run through the flow of the trip until we complete it. Go ahead. Customer and car. Then we will uh, drop off the passenger. And from here, you notice uh, it didn't ask if you wanted to finalize it. They have to actually, you know, manually click that button. Um, we did that for specific reasons. Uh, one, sometimes there's a time match to when they close the trip out. And so we want to give them the ability to do that by themselves. So um, we look at the screen. We have all of our time. We go and confirm that everything is good. And once it's good, you click the checkbox. And now that and now you have an opportunity to co collect payment if you need to. You can go ahead, go through with that, do like a cash payment or something. So we'll pay this off with uh, a cash transaction for simplicity. Click the make payment. And now this uh, payment is recorded. That's a great signature, Jared. There we go. So that's sort of the flow of a trip. Um, now we do have the search section, um, which you can go and look at all your trips, uh, trips that you've completed or upcoming trips. And uh, notice here that the drop off is completely hidden. Um, passenger information is hidden and we sort of, uh, uh, you know, we, we put initials there instead of having the, the passenger's full name or contact. Uh, information just quickly and I wasn't really going to go over this but there is the messages section so if you decide to send your uh, show for any messages um, it will show up here in this messages uh, section I did mention about the uh, state mappings and status mappings um, we do have an entirely new section in in limo anywhere's back office that we wanted to kind of go over um, so in this new state mapping section this is really going to control what statuses your drivers can select inside a driver anywhere, right? And what's, uh, you know, when they hit on the way, for instance, what status will that um, uh, be mapped to in, in your system? Uh, so uh, in this section, you want to make sure that uh, your statuses are, um, you know, in, in each specific bucket are, um, you know, mapped correctly. So if you notice this driver is en route to pick up, we have that mapped on the way. We have a circling status that is mapped to the driver's circling state. Um, we have, and those are the ones that we always had, um, but we have some new ones called completing and completed. So completing is the passenger dropped off. So, uh, you know, when the passenger is out of the car, they will go into this completing state. And completed is the status that the reservation will be changed to when the driver closes out the trip. And listening to some feedback from a lot of our operators, um, we found out that they wanted more control over uh, you know, not only the statuses that are in this driver workflow, um, but also those additional statuses that um, you were able to update that are outside of the workflow. So we added this extra bucket simply called driver statuses out of workflow. So again, if you have any sort of, you know, clock in, garage in, or, you know, code 10 or whatever you have that you want them to be able to select at any given time, um, you would drag one of your statuses uh, from the left-hand column over to uh, that final column there. So um, the next thing I want to show is the future plans for driver anywhere so the future plans for driver anywhere we've added some new features and have decided to sort of update it, the design uh, simply based on some of the feedback we've gotten from our clients so on the left hand side you'll see this requirements section 
one thing that a lot of uh, drivers and operators uh, told us is that they uh, didn't know when there were uh, notes for the driver or there was no big notification or a or way to quickly know if there are child seats or child uh, toddler seats or if the uh, vehicle needs to be an accessible vehicle or if there needs to be a greeting sign or anything like that. So um, we added this requirement section, which we sort of combined all of those sort of trip requirements um, into one section. Uh, we've also taken a look at the color scheme and uh, and and simplified it and, uh, to work better if your phone supports a dark mode or a light mode setting. Um, so if you look at this middle trip, uh, this in progress card, um, the text is significantly larger from uh, the walkthroughs that we were just showing you. And uh, you know we tried to fix the spacing and to make it more readable for the chauffeur when they're not holding the phone um, in their hands, right? Um, just from talking with everyone, we we found out that you know the chauffeurs more or less never and they should never be holding the phone. It's going to be mounted somewhere. So we we needed to make sure that uh, the text, the confirmation, the con the, cu the customer's name and where they were going were. Um, clearly visible and also that the buttons were spaced enough apart to where we could um, eliminate any mistakes um, while they were trying to hit the icons. So all of our icons that we had before were mostly this, uh, what we had on our old version of DA um, we have here but we've added a new icon and that's the uh, one with the exclamation point. So what happens when you press that or when the chauffeur presses that they get the job requirements uh, sort of instantly um, on their phone in a pop-up and then they could even do the greeting sign from there if they need to. And similar to that, you see the three additional location section. Um, if they press that, they will get a pop-up of the full routing with all of the stops and things like that. So uh, they can quickly um, you know, navigate uh, from that screen in it as well. So that three additional locations, it works just like that requirement section, except it, it's just specific to routing. Now, lastly, and Jared, if you can zoom in here a little bit, this is the uh, trip detail section. It's sort of redesigned. Um, go ahead and scroll up real quick before we get to the uh, this section. So um, we made sure that if they do go to the trip detail section, all of those job requirements are at the top. This is a big departure from what we had before because the notes uh, to the driver, we're all the way at the bottom, and I, I'm pretty sure that was a big reason why they were being missed. And so we've moved all the pertinent information and the important important information about the trip to the top of the job requirement screen. Um, now, if you scroll down here, Jared, um, we also added a a payment section that not only can you launch to the collect payment process. Um, but you can view, or the chauffeur can view the full rate breakdown. Now, um, some operators don't want their chauffeurs to view all of this information, and that's okay. Um, this is all in your driver anywhere settings that, that have always existed. Um, we just sort of changed where, where the uh, rate breakdown is uh, to make it um, easily viewable for those that have the permissions to do so. Now let's talk about some plans and what we're going to do for Driver Anywhere 3. Um, some of you all may still be using Driver Anywhere 3 or uh, may be using a combination of both, um, but eventually, um, you know, we can no longer support two versions of the app. What are we going to do? So we do have one final update coming for Driver Anywhere 3, and we're going to uh, remove the map screen, the internal map screen, and we're going to make the mapping function just like it does in GA4. Um, that means that when you click um, that you want to do navigation, it will launch your default mapping provider on your uh, phone. And, uh, you know, of course, you can do the trip. When you hit back, it'll go back into Driver Anywhere. And after this, uh, final update, we will uh, no longer update a DA3 anymore and uh, we will no longer support it. So we will actually more than likely keep it out for the rest of the year. And then at the last day of 2020, we will replace it entirely um, with DA4 and only have 
one application on the store going forward. If you noticed, we did not have a additional gratuity um, in that payment process. Um, we have some big plans coming for uh, leaving additional gratuity. Um, one is putting it in the hands of the passenger and our new uh, passenger app. And we will have a webinar uh, solely uh, for that passenger app. And so uh, we'll, we'll go through that probably next month or uh, at the beginning of April. But if you still need to use additional gratuity or if your drivers want to put in additional gratuity, they can um, they sort of have a workaround. And if you've been with us for a while, you've probably seen this uh, before because uh, in a previous version of Driver Anywhere, I think in DA2, this was how it worked. So we'll let Jared log in here. We want to go to where you map the Driver Anywhere uh, fields. Go company preferences, Driver Anywhere. So um, on that uh, update screen that we were showing, um, that's where you can map what fields pass back into Limo Anywhere. And so you can map any one of these fields uh, to additional gratuity. So if you see here, we have miscellaneous fees mapped there, but we also have, uh, there we go, extra grat. And so if the user of Driver Anywhere enters in that uh, gratuity back in the application, it will map to the correct field. So Jerry, can you show them where that is one more time here in the application? So drivers can add additional gratuity um, here. Uh, there you go, miscellaneous fee, and they will just place whatever amount that is there, and it will come over as additional um, gratuity. And um, so they can do this from now um, until uh, the, the new passenger web application comes out. And we have a really awesome way um, that the uh, passengers can handle um, leaving driver ratings and uh, additional gratuity. So that will conclude our walkthrough of uh, Driver Anywhere. We'll give you guys 30 minutes back. Uh, thank you all for coming. And any questions or suggestions, please email support at limoanywhere.com. So thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.